Welcome everybody to Indie Resources 6 video on how to build a browser based MMO 2.0. Um, this video we got a lot to cover. Um, it may even drain into two videos because I did go ahead and complete the map system. Um, once again kind of like the last video I started to kind of do it all live and it just became a became a real issue so I figured I would go ahead and build it and explain how it works and it's just going to work out a lot better that way. So as you can see I have the map system here. I removed all the white blocks. Everything's still kind of not, not in the right format that we want, but that's fine. We're going to change that later. Right now we're just basically getting some things working. As you can see here, you can actually move around the map. I did do the map a little differently than I think people were expecting. There are um, the normal 25 grids, but each si inside of each one of these is another 9. That way we can have all these little things right here. These are adjustable where we can set them up to where they do change, but um, at least now there's kind of a, there's a little more on the screen than what there normally would be. Um, we're not really. It's not really going to be a kind of a point and click where you you lumber here. It's more like a button, and this kind of represents what the property looks like or what each grid looks like. The whole grid. So if there's a lot of trees or the lumber's really high, it's probably going to show lumber. Um, that's in the same way with mining and things like that. And depending on how well it is, and some of it's based off randomness as well. Kind of sort of randomness. The one thing I was going to do is have this thing completely random, but then I realized it's an MMO. If you have two players standing here, they all need to see the same thing. So I had to kind of work on some formulas, and it may be stuff we change later, but the biggest concept of this is to to get this working and get the map working, get everything uh, good and going. Now there's a couple things we have to do before we get too far into this. Um, I realized why my WAMP was messing up, and that was because we didn't put any clothes on our in our database class. We didn't actually close the database. So I did add that and I and let me just go ahead and tell you now, go ahead and download the source because trying to go through every all these changes that I just made and type them out is going to be a pain. You're better off just following along with me as I go through everything so you can kind of learn what I did because it's just going to be easier. A um, lot less issues that way. So I did put a close function in here to close it off. Um, let's see, if you look at Get map, you'll notice that I am closing now as well as the map designer. There's a close here as well. I made some changes here to where it still spits out the error, but I am closing that connection. So that was one, one mistake we had. The next thing we had is I pulled up my Mozilla because I was, I was trying to figure out what was making this thing run, and I noticed that my Mozilla, the screen, is by far a major different size. So I ma had to make some changes to our HTML to make this fit a little better. So you can see here it still works just fine here, but um, it, uh, it, we're, we're going to have to work on the actual CSS behind this and get it good and free flowing. It looks like crap right now because we don't have any backgrounds and we haven't put any backgrounds here and we will. Um, so don't just look at this and say, oh crap, you know, it's, we are going to update this. Right now I think functionality is the funnest thing to work on and that's what we're really going to work on. And because we're kind of free in this thing, I don't want to attempt to do all these designs and then come back later and somebody's like, hey, what if we do this? Or, hey, can you put this in your design? And then we have to change everything. So get the features running and then we'll make it look pretty. So as you can see, you can now walk around the map. Pretty cool. The Everything's based off of a, um, you have your, your ground level and then these are all pictures on top of the ground level. I know there's a lot on here. You, we can slim those down and let me go ahead and let's go ahead and talk about what all I did. Let's start with the index. Um, a couple things we had to do on the index is, I of course, um, let's start with let's start with the the actual directional keys. So I tell you what, instead, let's start where I started building the map. Let's go back to that again. So what I did is I created a inside of map. Now we have we have of course of our get map, and then we have our build map, which we had before. <coughs> but the the difference is you'll notice there's a lot more code here. Let me go ahead and say starting off before anybody complains about it. Yes, there's probably better ways of doing this, but not easy enough to where I can explain it and it makes sense to everybody. This is this is this lays it out. It's longer code, probably more lines, but it's much easier to understand. And that's just the way I'd rather do the tutorials is make sure everybody understands what we're actually building here. So one thing to note, we were using inner HTML to um, to change things. When you are adding when you're using inner HTML and you're continually adding things, if it sees a missing div, it will automatically add it. So what I had to do is create a, create a variable here that we stored it all in, and then at the very end of the, that's when we changed the inner HTML, and this is where it mattered. What I did is, here's our original um, inner grid that we were building. That was just that grid that said R whatever and C whatever. 
I changed the background style, which is the grass you see or the water. Let's go back. Let's use Mozilla. It's a little bigger. So anything like the sand and it's not the grass, but anything that looks like dirt or whatever else, that's and this right here. This that's all base. Just the here. I'll tell you what. Here's the best way to show it. Let's go into our media. You will now notice some terrain in here. Our backgrounds. So these are our backgrounds. And then we have the foregrounds, which are all our trees and things we can change. I'm not I'm not a great artist, and I'm not good at matching artists. I'm a coder, so I know you guys will make this thing a lot look a lot prettier than I will, but this is a good base star. So this is our background, and that's all it's using is a background image for that. Um, what I was doing is is I was making I basically created a for loop inside of each um, each one of these grids that actually goes through nine times and it, so basically it's nine little bitty grids inside that one grid and in between each one of those that's where we put our pictures I don't know it's necessarily what we want you know that it'll work the best but I figured we give it a try and see how we like it and if we don't like it we can always change it later but I'll just take everybody's thoughts and opinions on it but at least this way I built it kinda maxed it out to where if anybody does want it they know how to do it and then we can always take away from there um, so let's start from the top here Everything else is pretty much the same here, except for I I added this. I opened the grid, so here's where the, the the div. And I tell you what, this may be even easier. Let's inspect element. So you can see the grid starts here. That's our big old grid, and then inside there, we're gonna have nine. Let's close this off. We're gonna have. There's where the, the it stops. We're gonna have nine little inner grids. You see them all. Um, these are our foreground. So we have background, and then we have foreground, and background, foreground, so forth. <clears throat> to where each one of these has a each one of these little bitty ones has a background, and it has a foreground, and that's how we get so many little bitty spots. We don't necessarily travel by those nine; we travel by the full big grid. So it's it's not you're not traveling at each every little one. It's just I didn't want it to have like one tree on, on each one of these or one rock or one of that. I kind of wanted to add a lot more flavor to it. Granted, there's probably too many. We'll, we'll talk about that later. So anyway, you can kind of see how I did it with... So this is the opening. We'll, we'll talk about this these in a minute. Um, and then, then we do our... So our opening, we count through the nine. And then what we do is we... We take whatever we get out of this function right here and we just put it in here is all we're doing we're just creating pictures is all we're doing these are doubled up because we have an if it's a if it's the normal grid go here if it's the um, what we call the break grid the float clear float it comes down here way more code than we need but like I said it's much easier to understand so let's talk about how we get those pictures so we have a we have a new uh, JS file for our engine Let's go back out. Let's go to our scripts. Let's go to JS engine. So we have two more. We have for player and we have terrain builder. Here's our terrain builder. A lot of code here. Once again, could be done easier, but I want it to want to be able to explain it as we go through it. So and and like I said, we can always change this later. I'm open to, to whatever ideas. I had a pretty complicated uh, way of doing it, but I was like, eh, it's just too complicated. It it I'd end up kind of losing losing the whole point behind this. So all it does, it's real simple. It looks at if the tile is zero, if it's three. So it passes two things. It passes data and it passes tile. Data is the object for that grid that it gets out of the database. And our, which is, well, we don't have it right now, but I won't worry about pulling it. But anyway, it's, it's that one object it pulls out of the database like we talked about. And then the tile is the actual, what tile it is out of those 25. If it's these three tiles, then it's going to run this. If it's these three tiles, it's going to run this. If it's if it's anything else, it's going to run this. Um, we may want to add some more in here if we want to make it more random, but it it's not the best way to randomize it. But it, for now, it works great. So anyway, what it did is if the water is greater than five and it's less than ten, then return this tile. It automatically defaults to plain old grass. So if it doesn't find anything in any of these, if if it doesn't match any of these, it'll just be plain grass. And all it's doing is it, it says if, if it's between if the water and this number is coming from the database, whatever that water is in the database. We'll go ahead and pull that up. So basically, if we go to and we look at browse. So if the water, whatever number that is in here, that's what it looks at. 
and if it's in between these, return this tile. If it's in between these, return this tile. In between these, that way it randomizes the tiles a little bit. Um, then that's the background. For the foreground, same thing except for it's a different function, calls the same stuff. It This first one, if it's this tile, it'll pull this. Now there is a much better way of doing this, but I want everybody to understand what we're attempting to do, and this right here is like the simplest way to explain it. And then we're gonna we're gonna make this better later on. But let's let's get some more functions in place before we get really too complicated. So all it's doing right now is it's it's looking at if lumber is in between these, it returns this tile, these, and basically it's returning our terrain foregrounds. It's just returning these numbers, and that's how it's finding it, whatever number it is. So you can see 20, 21. Uh, 22 and then uh, 40, 41, 42. I, originally I had an idea about how the number system was go, going and then that's when I realized it's going to be too complicated for right now. Not saying it's too complicated for you guys but too complicated to fit early on in the video. So we're, we're going to take this route for now. So anyway and then it looks at if if data, or I mean if mining and if harvest. It just it just randomly kind of it, it I change them up each time so that way each it looks it's a little different every single time but it looks the same for everybody everybody runs through the same algorithms so it's exact same thing so very simplistic system probably not the best but it but it works and that's what we want we want something that works and kind of looks neat and like I said we can always change it later but I, I really like the way it is now um, just for a simple system so that's all your tile builder is is just it's just doing this little tile build. And that's how it's building these, each one of these. That's how it's finding it. Let me close this out. Okay, but let's use this. You do have a little character here. I'm gonna I'm gonna work on making them a little bigger later, maybe. So because I'm making it to where it's it's each person can choose their own character and they're different, and you'll be able to see other people's characters and their different style and all that. Um, so maybe make them a little bigger so they're a little more visible because when you come over here to Chrome, and I don't know how it looks on y'all's. So if it's awkward or whatever, let me know and we'll, we'll work on that. But it's really small for this guy. That That's where the medium, large, and small for Bootstrap comes in. I just haven't played with that. I was, I was toying with the map, having fun with that first. So let's get back to this. Okay, so we're actually... We're actually probably going to end this video so it's not too long and get it up to YouTube and then the next video we'll finish this. But the, So after that um, map designer we've already talked about, let's exit that out. Git map, nothing changed there, we can exit it out. Terrain builder, I already explained this one. So we'll talk about the player, the travel system, um, explain a little more about the map system and then we'll go over the different style changes I made and the index changes.